All right, it's day 102. Welcome back for another episode of Growing Fall Gold Raspberry Cuttings. I've always wondered if the local pollinators can somehow detect whether my plants are ready to flower. I have a lot of anecdotal evidence that might suggest that's the case, such as this honeybee which just materialized and decided to groom in sun here. It must have some ability to detect when things are ready to flower, even though insects have limited intelligence compared to, say, hummingbirds. They can navigate really well and remember things, and even remember people's faces and so on. So in the past, I've had other series where the hummingbirds would come by and investigate every day to see if anything had flowered, because they considered my balcony part of their territory and this is probably no exception. There's been a lot of torrid leaf growth. These leaves, uh, compound leaves with three leaflets, sometimes five, are huge now. Some of them are the size of my hand or even greater and they look really healthy so I'm really happy about that. This is a bright spot in 2018, the growth story du jour of my channel and the new leaves uh, look a little bit more yellow green but they soon turn very lush uh, dark green and huge just like everything else if you look at the bottom that banana peel smoothie with a mango seed smoothie layered on top has not aged well it looks terrible it looks like a moldy mess basically very very moldy cookie instead of a fresh one right out of the oven so I'm going to water and I know that would just make more mold but basically I figured that the mold and whatever else is in there decomposing will help release all the nutrients and as I water every few days from the top those nutrients will trickle down through that layer of clay soil and into the potting mix and transfer all the nutrients down to the root system so as you can see everything's pretty lush the original cutting is underwhelming at this point. It's almost irrelevant. It doesn't seem like the plant has devoted any growth to that region. So it's basically obsolete, but it does have an offshoot coming out of the side. So maybe these are just two really big offshoots. Um, the one that's vertical has replaced the original, essentially, that maybe came out of a node um, beneath there since I buried a little bit of the stick after the series started with additional dirt and decomposing materials. So it's day 110. There are lots of fungus gnats, lots of mold growing on top, but the growth has been great and torrid. You can see this offshoot is much taller and it's almost thicker. Well, I do think it is thicker actually than the original stick. It comes out at slightly different of an angle Maybe it is an offshoot, not a primal cane. And this secondary offshoot comes off of a higher node, off of that stick, um, the very bottom one that's not buried at least, that we can see. So this one isn't as impressive as the first offshoot that comes from a lower base. It, it's not as thick, it doesn't have as much support. It's sort of at an unfavorable angle that makes it a little cumbersome or soon will. So the leaves just keep getting bigger and bigger. Like I said, they're bigger than the size of my hand. So everything is going swimmingly so far. And I know not a lot of people have watched this series or have shown interest thus far, but that may change in the future and pick up. If it does, then I can make more cutting series. If not, and I figure out that people would rather just see things grown from seeds because they want to see the initial stages starting with cotyledons or not and the first true leaves and growing from tiny little plants into behemoths then I'll do that exclusively but this is my second cutting series and it's been a real joy it's been very easy and perhaps that's why there hasn't been a lot of uh, traffic for it because uh, maybe anyone can do this so I'm watering yet again and as you can see uh, between the leaves there's a lot of mold so I assume that as long as the mold and rot isn't festering around the roots, then I'm good. So currently I'm of the mindset that 
any organic material that's too rich and too fresh down there in the soil or potty mix that's constantly rotting when wet can and will release toxic poisonous gases that will damage the roots and kill them or stunt their growth and hence it's better to have mostly real dirt or soil which is essentially rock powder with maybe less than one percent natural organic material that's already heavily decomposed and in this case that's not true because I have all this potting mix that was once upon a time sterilized and then I use this for my century plant growing series and I fertilized who knows how many times so it should be pretty rich but potty mix is well draining it holds a lot of water it doesn't really seem to hold on to nutrients that well in my opinion it's largely indigestible stuff like uh, wood chips and bark chips sphagnum peat moss but um, yeah this plant series has gone pretty well the spines the stems look thick and healthy well, the spines actually aren't a menace but this part of this leaf that I just bent um, one of the leaflets was hooked onto a spine maybe it's due to the wind maybe that happened when it was developing and it was really curled but the day after I unhooked it which is today everything recovered so no harm no foul and this is a Californian bee fly on day 114 that I saw grooming itself I don't know why these bees native or otherwise like to hang out here but perhaps it's what I said earlier they just like to wait for something to flower or it's a good spot they like the scent who knows so it's day 121 look how tall the offshoot has grown it's um, I'm not sure if the leaves have continued to get bigger but I would say yes I'm just looking through all the clips in this entire series it seems like everything just continuously gets bigger although I'm sure the pace has slowed a little bit so this second offshoot is a little disappointing in that it's so droopy if this were in the wild or a garden it would just be dragging on the ground which is terrible but it's working on all these flower buds so I noticed these a few days ago there's been a lot of May gray, a lot of marine layer days where I see no sunlight in the morning, which is bad for my plants. Sun doesn't come out until the afternoon, but since I live in an east-facing apartment now, instead of a west-facing one, um, that southwest sun doesn't get here anymore. So the original cutting has an advanced spider mite infestation. It's disgusting. Spider mites are these little plant parasites that spin webs to protect themselves and they drink the contents of plant cells with their proboscis, needle-like mouth parts, just like mosquitoes. So you might think, wow, they're really small. They only drink the cytoplasm of one plant cell at a time. How bad could that be? Well, by the time you see this, it means um, there's all these tiny, maybe first and second larval instars drinking everything and those are fifth instar adults migrating so spider mites are ancient erected plant pests there are 1200 species and i just wanted to give you an angle of this very healthy and thick offshoot that has now replaced everything from the top down since it's getting a little bit too tall for me to get good videography from my table on top of my table so my first thought was to spray some 0.6 percent hydrogen peroxide on everything it's very mild it's used to disinfect human wounds you know it won't do anything to us it won't do anything to plants really there are some people who worry about this stuff but I've had a lot of experience spraying this stuff and I can guarantee that it's not going to do anything so I thought maybe that's a good very safe and clean way to deal with these pests and I sprayed this on and I waited but I still noticed some spider mites walking around so as with a mosquito larvae episode from my passion fruit days a while ago I think it kills maybe the majority of small insects like that but it probably won't kill everything so that's a big problem and then I thought well 
The stick in the middle, the original cutting is pretty much obsolete at this point, so why don't I just cut that off? It's covered in webs, it's got an advanced infestation, it's touching the much more larger and healthier looking leaves on this magnificent offshoot. So why don't I just use uh, cut that off and then use some insecticidal soap to disinfect that even though I'm going to throw this away. And the vascular tissue inside looked okay, even though I don't show that here. But insecticidal soap is something I tried on the Joshua tree. I was a little apprehensive, but nothing happened to my Joshua tree. And it's just one of the safer, less toxic ways to deal with uh, surface pests, plant parasites. And once it dries out in the sun especially, it won't do anything. So maybe a nighttime or shade application would be far better but for demonstration purposes I'm just showing you the first application if I see a continued infestation after two or three days I'll spray again maybe even if I don't just to be safe ideally I do it in the shade and let things sit there for a few minutes but this insecticidal soap should react almost instantly and as long as you don't do it in very hot and dry conditions in full sun it'll kill everything supposedly it comes into contact with although I don't think that's 100% the case always some insects and other bugs are very very resilient so my fourth thought was to prune away low-lying barely functional compound leaves ones very close to the base of this cutting the original cutting that serve no purpose really they don't get any sun because of this very large offshoot and it's giant fanned out leaves and I'll treat this as well before I throw it away but the reality is most pests can't cross even a meter of concrete balcony they just stay on their plants or whatever plant material they're attached on if you knock them off or wash them off and they fall on the table they won't be able to make it back onto your plant and infest anything but spider mites have this unique ability to secrete a little bit of silk thread and they can just stand on the edges of leaves and get blown off by the wind and that could spread the infestation to everything around here in the courtyard and it could also get to my bok choy sprouts that you see on the left um, they haven't grown very much because the may gray that I talked about earlier they've been very limited by just a lot of cold and cloudy days especially the mornings so if there's no sun in the morning and 11 30 12 rolls around then there's not going to be any direct sun for the rest of the day so I don't know if this is the same bee fly the same one that came back or is it a different one in either case it seems like my plant is very popular with the bees and bee flies so there are grubs and larvae and the organic layer on top it's uh, pretty gross in fact this entire layer is gross I had known that um, this organic layer of banana peel smoothies might attract German cockroaches. Thankfully, I don't have those. But for my case, it's attracted a lot of grubs, and some are alive, some are dead. I don't know what these are. 